Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video you'll see the build options and weapon options for the Land Raider Spartan from the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness. I've gone through most of the units that came in the Age of Darkness box set now, so today it's time to have a look at the Land Raider Spartan. So in the video, we'll go through the sprues, and I'll show you exactly what's left after it's built. I'll also show you the different weapons and options you can have to put on the top of the tank here, and then we'll have a look at the instruction book and go through just some of the points I've picked out through the build that I think might be helpful if you haven't put yours together yet, or if you're thinking of grabbing hold of the box. I'll also get another Land Raider from 40k so we can compare it side by side and hopefully that'll give you a really good idea about this model and help you decide whether or not you'd like to add it to your collection. Most of the sprues in the Age of Darkness box set are for this Land Raider Spartan and so it's a huge model and loads of parts but once you put it together you're going to be left with a large sprue like this with a few pieces left on it and then two half sprues. This large one is going to have some of the different iconography for the Imperial Fists and the Sons of Horus. And you're going to also have some different parts here that you can use. Some arms from the Commander or the Gunner. And so that's pretty much all that's going to be left on that sprue there. So we put that to one side. This one, you're going to have quite a few bits left depending on how you do the hatches. So you've got some different options for a pintle mounted combi weapon. And so you can choose from all the different weapons that you can see on here and you can also choose to have the hatch open or closed so you've got different parts that you can use from here as well and even if you have it open you're still going to have a few pieces left so good for kit bashing and using on other projects. Let's get in a bit closer so you can have a good look because you've got the pintle mounted havoc launcher there and there so a couple of bits you've got the smoke launcher different hatches you've got the multi melter which is down here you've got the pintle mounted heavy bolter the pintle mounted heavy flamer as well so that's going to go in a couple of parts this one and this one and so yeah quite a few weapons there you've also got some of the smaller weapons and the other parts of the commander or gunner depending on which one you build so there's a few pieces here you're not even going to use so again great for kit bashing you've got this spiked part here that i couldn't even see in the instruction book but, you know, that could go on the front or you could keep it for another vehicle, really. So that sprue has got quite a lot going on there. And if you don't choose to use the commander at all or the gunner, then you've got almost got like half a model that you can use elsewhere as well. Then you've got this sprue here, which has got a few parts that are similar to the what the LAS cannons are mounted on on the sponsons. So that's going to be that one. A few little bits there that go into it, too. So, again, good for kit bashing and other projects. Here's my Land Raider Spartan all assembled now. So you've got no options here but the Laz Cannons on the two Sponsons. So those are going to be the ones you go with. I've put the Smoke Launcher there. I've also put the Missile Launcher. I like the idea that the hatches are all shut down and they're just going steaming ahead into battle. So that's what I've gone with. I've also put a Spotlight on there because that looks pretty cool. I put Heavy Bolters as my choice of weapons there. But you've also got some other weapons. You can have these two flamers or you can put extra las cannons on there so i thought this would be a good option we've got plenty of las cannons going on so i thought putting the storm bolters or the heavy bolters sorry there would be a good way to go i've been playing quite a bit of 40k recently and the heavy bolters do some serious damage so i'm thinking of using like that in 40k a lot as you'll see as i develop the armies i'm working on and so yeah i've gone for heavy bolters that was my choice but you can put what you like on there i like the way this opens you've got two different hatches there so in the other style land raiders you can get you'll pull this down and it'll open up and in fact i'll grab one and show you so you can have a look so you pull it down and then the top opens automatically it's like a little mouth so there we go but this one is really nice and sturdy and here's the two com paired side by side and you can see this one is certainly a lot bigger than the regular Land Raider from 40k so longer if we put it to the side it's a little bit wider in especially with those sponsons as well and just the sides are different so there's some different detailing but definitely much bigger uh, not as many options for weapons and things though 
but I think really going with these las cannons is awesome. It's going to be really powerful on the battlefield and a great vehicle. It is quite bland when you look at it, you know, but it is what it is. Big brick of a vehicle that's going to go into battle, heavily armoured all the way around. The armor's going to be the same. It's 14 value on the sides, rear and the front. So this is going to be a tough nut to crack. Just as the sprues took up a lot of the space of the box, so does the instructions for this in the booklet. So you've got a lot of instructions to go through. It's kind of strange how it goes together, these little pieces, but it all makes sense and it fits neatly. So it is pretty sturdy. Sometimes these big models, if you get a little bit out, it's going to could be a little bit twisted. But with this, it went together quite nicely and I found that it lined up really well. There's a few bits later on that I just point out though. So right up until this stage, there was no problems, all pretty straightforward. Just make sure you don't glue in these hatches as it tells you. And then all this bit is pretty easy. There's a few bits here not to glue. And so it's just, it tells you not to glue these two parts, but you do have to glue one of them in so it turns. So if I, if I grab this and just show you, underneath there, it says not to glue either of those pieces in. But if you don't, it's just going to fall off. There's nothing to hold it. So this piece, if I come in a bit closer, actually, and just focus on that, I found that I had to glue in there, but not there. And then that will allow that to pivot. So that piece there needs to be glued, but that doesn't. And then you can get the nice pivot and that will work really well. And so do the same on the other side. And this is pretty, pretty tight. You've got some friction there to turn it. This side's a little bit looser, but um, it holds up no problem. So I think once that's sprayed, it's going to be a little bit better as well. Once I get some primer on there. I should point out that these actually come off so you can twist them off and then they come off like that. So you can put them on and off if you want to, maybe easier to prime and paint it. But if you wanted to glue it, you could certainly glue it so it's fixed like that and you wouldn't be able to turn it. Um, but it's kind of fun to turn it around during the battle and point it at the enemy. So there we go. Now, there's one other section in the book as well that is a little bit misleading. So here it says, like, not to glue this part down. So on 22i, C8. And that's because you want this weapon here to rotate. But you do have to glue this piece. So F12 needs to be glued down. But just be careful gluing around there because it can run into this and fix that in place. So just be a little bit careful when you glue that bit in because that does need to be secured. But don't glue it into C8. So here it looks like you would glue it in place. But if you do, it's not going to be able to turn. So don't glue F12 to C8. And obviously don't glue C8 to the main part of the chassis here. But you do need to glue F12 to the chassis very carefully. So a little bit of glue is all you need to put that on. And then you should be fine. The rest of it is really straightforward and there's no problem at all. So going through the book you can see here the track that went on really easily. Even these parts, which could have lined up a little bit wrong, went together well. And just be careful when you've got these two sections, let them fully dry before you push them together because there could be a little bit of movement, especially with this piece here. So just take care on that. But otherwise, pretty straightforward build. Not the most exciting model to put together, but when it's done, it looks great. And being able to fill it with so many Space Marines is going to be awesome. So there we go, that's the Land Raider Spartan. Now we've gone through the instruction book, had a look at the sprues, the leftover pieces, all the weapon options. Hopefully this has given you a really good idea about this model and exactly what you get in the Age of Darkness box set. So now if you wanna order it or not, hopefully this has helped you make that decision. I've put loads of videos on the channel now for the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box set. Unboxing, looking at the book, doing an overview of that, looking at the data sheets included here and also the reference sheet and then I'm doing this for all the units included in the box set too so that's all available on the channel if you'd like to check it out and if you wanted to order yourself a copy of the Age of Darkness box set I'll put links in the description below that will take you to Element Games and Wayland Games and there you can save up to 20% on the retail price so you can get this box set for a great price and what's included is just awesome. I hope you found the video helpful and so if you did please hit the like button subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit that notification bell too so you can join me here next time on tabletop skirmish games 
I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.